This is AK Engineering and today we are trying to make synthetic ruby again. This time I'm using a graphite plate because it's conductive and it can withstand the high temperatures we are trying to reach. I connect the base plate to the negative side and to the positive side is always on my safety stick. Instead of hitting the ruby powder directly, I'm trying to heat up the base plate as much as possible. The tungsten electrode is glowing red, so the temperature should be pretty high. I think we reached the power limit of my microwave oven transformer, because it smokes pretty bad. This time the base plate is much thinner and can heat up faster. It is made out of tungsten foil and can withstand the temperatures. You can see the pink color of the ruby, it's not much, but at least nothing melted. I try to compress the powder in order to have less air in it and to keep it from flying away. This time the base plate is made out of steel, but the thick layer of powder makes it hard to ignite the arc. The result looks promising, but it's not that big. This time I'm trying to stay in one place with the arc in order to have a higher temperature and have less air bubbles in my rubies. The molten layer is thicker than the last time, but we have holes and inclusions in the middle, so not perfect either. Next I tried aluminum foil as a mold and my welding mask as a camera filter. The stone beneath melted, so I had to add some ceramics to protect it. This time only the aluminum foil melted and we had a stable process that we can try and try again. I 
I ended up doing quite a lot of these runs with the same setup and I quite like it. It is super dangerous and the quality of the rubies is not that great, but it's a stable process to try another mixture. After a couple of tries I managed to get some decent sized rubies. I tried using acetone because it evaporates pretty fast and doesn't leave any residue. I can heat it up with a torch without the powder flying away. An oxygen torch is necessary to reach the temperatures where the aluminum oxide melts. This process takes about 10 minutes. This is the biggest ruby I have made so far. For my final attempt I'm trying to use a graphite mold. I'm cutting a long groove and filling it up with our acetone mixture. One torch preheats the graphite and another is directed at the groove. I'm trying to melt it into a long rod. It is pretty thin, but I was successful. That's all for today. I hope you enjoyed it and consider subscribing to AKA Engineering.